Well, we got some feedback just recently about math page 1076 and a specific question um, about the uh, about writing some of these answers or returning a word sentence into symbols, algebraic symbols, and creating a math statement. <clears throat> this is coming from page 14. It shows up again on the checkup. And uh, so I just want to kind of walk through some of these. These are similar to some of the problems, but they're not the exact same numbers. But let's talk about what some of these mean. Let's do a quick review. What do the terms sum, difference, product, and quotient mean? Okay, we really need to know that. So the sum is the answer to addition, right? Difference is the answer to subtraction. Product is the answer to multiplication and then quotient is the answer to division now for both the sum and the product when you're multiplying or adding it doesn't matter which order the numbers go in all right we'll see that in a minute but if we are doing the difference or we're doing a quotient then it does matter which one comes first or which one comes on the top or bottom so let's walk through these examples and see what types of answers could be acceptable because maybe you come up with an answer that's slightly different than the score key and have it still be correct, okay? <clears throat> I have here a number K multiplied by 15 less 7. So we could take K and then use the dot for multiplying, right? 15 and then we're going to take away 7. Now, in this, we don't need parentheses because actually multiplication would always be done before we would do the subtraction. So this is okay the way it is. <clears throat> However, mathematicians prefer that when we have a term like this where we have a number and a letter being multiplied together, they prefer that the number come first. Now, I don't know that in the PACE it ever said that it's a rule and that you absolutely have to, but I think you'll notice in the score key they almost always put the number first when it is a single term, which means we have two or three things being multiplied together. So another way of writing this would be 15, my marker's dying on me, 15K minus 7. Okay, so that would be the same, same thing. Here we have the quotient of B and 7 increased <clears throat> by 18. Again, the way we have all these different terms. We have quotient, we have increased, and it's a little confusing to know what goes, what goes where, okay? And <clears throat> there's no commas in here, so... It looks like it's kind of all running together. Now, quotient, of course, means two things are being divided, okay? So, and whatever comes first is going to go on the top. So, remember I said if, if we're doing a sum, excuse me, a difference or a quotient, the order is important. So, the, uh, up here, the order was not important because K times 15 would be the same as 15 times K. So, the order doesn't matter. That would not make it right or wrong. <clears throat> but here the order matters. The quotient of two things, okay? Um, the quotient of B and, so here's the key word, the other thing the quotient is between is B and 7, and then it says increase by 18, all right? I think they should put a comma in here because they mean for just these two things to be the quotient. And then we take the answer and add 18. But I can see how that would be, that could be interpreted as B over 7 increased by 18. I, but that's not really what they're looking for, all right? <clears throat> so let's, um, let's assume we have a comma here, the quotient of this and this. And then that quotient is being increased by 18. So quotient means division. So I'm going to write B over 7. B divided by 7. Now, could you have written B divided by 7? Actually, yes. Okay, that is another way of writing a quotient. And that would be acceptable, okay? 
In algebra, this is the preferred way because a fraction actually is division. So <clears throat> we should probably get in the habit of doing this, and I think this is what you'll see in the score key. But technically, this is correct, okay? And then increased by 18. So we're going to take this answer and take this product, this quotient rather, this quotient increased by 18. So now we're adding 18. We could do the same over here, just add 18. If we knew what B was, okay, let's say B was 21. If I plugged in 21, 21 over 7 would be 3, and then I would take 3 plus 18, okay, to get um, 21, okay. <laughs> over here, if I plugged in 21, I would get the same thing. 21 divided by 7 is 3, and then add that to the 18. So it doesn't matter in this case, you will get the same answer. Now, here's a, here's a word, ratio. That's another way of saying fraction, okay? So it says the ratio of five and, okay? What's the other thing on the other side of the ratio? The difference. So we have five and the difference, difference of what? Because difference is the answer to something. The difference of this and the number M, okay? <clears throat> so this means, I guess I'm gonna do this over here. I'm gonna put the five on the top. The order is important. Whatever comes first in a ratio goes on top. Whatever comes first in a quotient, that goes on top. So the ratio of five and the difference, so that means down here, I'm gonna have a subtraction. Difference of what? Nine, okay? and the number m. So the two things that we are subtracting go on the bottom. 9 minus m, the difference of 9 and m. And again, the order for difference is important. So could I say m minus 9? No. Think about a number like 7. What is 9 minus 7? 2. What is 7 minus 9? Ah, it's actually negative 2, which is a different number. So we can't change the order when we are doing difference. That makes a difference. Sorry, I had to stick that in there. All right. Now, the sum of, remember sum is addition, okay? The sum of what? C and, okay, what's the other thing? The sum of C and nine. So a sum always means you're going to be adding two things. What are the two things? C and nine. So this is like saying C plus nine. That's easy, all right? So if I take C plus nine, it says that needs to be subtracted from 37. Now be careful, because here's where a lot of students, no matter what math curriculum they're using, all right, make a mistake. They see the word subtract, they see the number 37, and so they say minus 37. And that is not correct. Here you're subtracting 37 from this sum, okay? So we have to do something else here. Because we want the answer to this addition, we actually need to put this in parentheses, okay? because they, we would have to solve that first to get an answer, and then the, that answer gets subtracted from 37. So the 37 has to come first, and then we subtract the answer, the sum of C and 9 from the 37, okay? So in some of these, order really is important. Um, here, if we're just multiplying two things together, you could, I would think, have this as the answer. And if it were on a self-test or a PACE test as, a, as your teacher, I would not mark it wrong, but I would probably point out to you that this is the more preferred answer, okay? This is the preferred way of writing quotient, but this is acceptable as well. I would not mark it wrong if you were my student and you had something like this on the PACE test, okay? <clears throat> Um, 
Th let me let me just go back to this one as well because there sometimes this gets confusing if this comma is not here and it just says the quotient of b and 7 increased by 18 almost makes it sound like the quotient is between b and 7 increased by 18 in which case we could have written b divided by 7 increased by 18 Honestly, I think just missing that comma means we could interpret it this way and we could write it this way. So as a parent or teacher, I would try to be understanding if I had a student write the answer like that and go back and look at it. The only way to make it, I think, crystal clear that this is what's intended is we should put a comma here after the seven. <clears throat> and in looking through on page 14 and the checkup and self-test coming up, some of them they do use commas, some of them they don't, where I think they maybe could have to make it a little clearer. All right, so hopefully that clears up some of the questions um, on page 14, and I uh, hope you'll do well then on the checkup coming up on page 17 and 18.